Hi. Now in this example, what we've got is to solve this log equation. I'm assuming that you're reasonably familiar then with doing log equations. And uh, if, if not, you can always go on my uh, website. Plenty of tutorials on solving equations with logs. Just go on to examsolutions.net and uh, check those tutorials out. OK, well, to do this question, you might like to pause the video and come back when ready. But essentially, what I notice is that I've got three terms here. We've got one term here, another term here, and another term here. And whenever you're dealing with log equations, you've got to reduce them down to two terms. That is, one term on one side of the equals, and another term on the other side of the equals. So let's just copy this equation down first of all. We've got 2 log in base 3 of x minus the log of x minus 2. That's also in base 3, and it equals 2. Now, how do I create two terms? Well, you've got to be familiar with the log rules, and I'm assuming that you are. Here's just a resume of them, OK? Now, in order to group these logs together, I'm going to want to head towards this rule, the subtraction rule here. The log of a in base c minus the log of b in base c is identical to the log of a divided by b in base c. But there's a problem, because for this rule to work, there must be no number or value in front of a log. And we have got a value in front of this log here, the 2. So before we can use this rule, what I've got to do is remove this 2. And we can use this rule here, the power rule. That when you've got a number in front of a log, then all you do is you take it up as a power here. So this term here can be written as the log in base 3 of x squared. OK, the 2 goes up as a power there. And then we've got minus the log in base 3 of x minus 2, and that equals 2. So OK, we've still got our three terms, OK? But we can now reduce it down to two terms, because we can use the subtraction rule, this one here. We've essentially got the log of something minus the log of something else in the same base, so it's the log of each of those values divided by one another, OK, in that base. So this is going to reduce down to the log in base 3, then, of x squared divided by x minus 2, OK? And that equals 2. Notice that it's not the log of x squared in base 3 divided by the log of x minus 2 in base 3, OK? It's just this value here, OK? It's not log over log. Now, we've got our two terms. And once you've got your two terms, OK, we can now use this principle up here. You can see that the log of anything, big N here, in base C, if it equals little n, it follows that big N equals the base C to the power of N here, little n. So, if we compare this, we can remove the log by saying that x squared over x minus 2, OK, that part there corresponds to the big N here, so I've written it here, equals the base, which is 3, to the power of 2. That little n there, which is the 2 in my example, goes up there as a power, OK? So x squared over x minus 2 equals 3 squared. We know that 3 squared is 9. And if I multiply both sides by x minus 2, I'm going to therefore have x squared equals 9 multiplied by x minus 2. And so if we continue this down here, we've got a quadratic equation. 
so we need to expand the bracket and start to rearrange the term. So we've got x squared equals 9x minus 18 if we expand the bracket. Now make this equal to 0 by subtracting 9x and adding 18 to both sides. So you've got x squared minus 9x plus 18 equals 0. And judging by the question, it doesn't say things like find x to so many decimal places or give the exact values which would kind of suggest roots. That would suggest then using the quadratic formula. It doesn't say that, so I would tend to think this is going to factorize. And if we look closely, it does factorize. All right, You end up with x here, x here, and a minus 3 and a minus 6. Check that out, it gives you that. So that means that therefore x minus 3 must equal 0 or the factor x minus 6 must equal 0 leading to x equals 3 or x equals 6. Check it out, we've got values, it says values so we're expecting more than one answer. I've seen many questions in the past where it says find the value in questions like this and you end up with two values. Check it out that when you substitute these values in for x here, you're not taking the log of a negative number in cases like that. Okay? But if we put 3 in here, we're taking the log of a positive value and a positive value here. 3 take away 2, giving 1. Okay? And the same is true for 6. If ever you've got to take the log of a negative number, it wouldn't be valid. So it does say find the values then, everything looks in order. And that's your solution.